Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. Today I'm going to talk about my journey from Windows into Linux. So let's get to it. Well, I bought a computer in 2011 and it had three processors and four gig of RAM. And then in 2012, I bought another computer and it had four processors and four gig of RAM. And they were running on Windows 7 and they were running pretty good. In 2019, the computer with four processors and four gigas of RAM started running sluggish, really slow. It was hard to open up the web browser. That computer had a 500 gig hard drive and I was running out of gig. So I was running out of space. So when I looked, I only had like 20 gig left. But the thing is, is that I only had 50 gigs of personal files. My uh, music, videos, personal files, spreadsheets, Word documents were about 50 gigabytes. So I don't know where the 500 gigabytes went. So I decided to do a factory reset on my computer. So I did a factory reset. And after I did the factory reset, of course, the factory reset took it back to the way it was in 2012. So, of course, I had to do Windows updates. And when I did that, I decided to do a factory reset on my other computer from 2011. Now, that other computer was running okay, but would say half the hard drive was taken up. And I don't know why, because I only had in that computer as well 50 gigs of personal files. Now, it wasn't a big deal on that computer because that computer was a terabyte. But I decided to do a factory reset on both. So with the factory resets, and then when you do a factory reset from such an old computer, you have to update Windows. So the whole process of doing a factory reset and updating Windows for both computers took 24 hours. But it was done. And the computer that hardly had any space left, my 500 gig hard drive, was empty. Well, not empty. I mean, I had Windows in it. And I had the updates and I re entered in all my personal files and it was fine. It was only between my personal files and windows. I was only using about 90 gigs of hard drive. So I don't know what the problem was before. But anyways, the computer was running smooth. They were running on windows seven. Everything was good. My web browser was opening fast. I had all my space back. But like I said, it took, the whole process for both computers took about 24 hours. And the other problem was I had some failed updates and I didn't know how to fix them. And I went and did some research on the internet. And for one computer, I was able to fix all the failed updates, but that took several hours. And the other computer, I think I still had some failed updates, but I just ignored it. But the computers were running fine. So that was early in 2019. At the end of 2019, I find out that Windows 7 is coming to an end. So I updated my computers to Windows 10 and I didn't think it was going to work because I only had four gigs of RAM in both computers. But I updated the computers to Windows 10 and they were fine. They were running. I was kind of surprised. They were running really nice. But I kind of thought that Windows 10 was a bit bloated and uh, I wasn't terribly impressed with Windows 10. And that was at the end of 2019. Then over the holidays of 2019, I started watching Linux videos and I decided to install Linux on one of my computers. So I installed Linux Mint as my first Linux distribution. And this was the default wallpaper back in those days. And I really liked it. Now I did a dual boot. I didn't wipe out my windows right away. And I used this for about, I don't know if it was a couple days, maybe a week. And I decided to keep it. So I did another install and wiped out Windows and installed this Linux Mint. Then after a few weeks or so, I installed it on the other computer. And the rest is history. I used Linux Mint for, I lived in it for several months. And after a few months of being on Linux Mint, I tried MX Linux. And I lived in it for about a week on one of my computers, but decided to go back to Linux Mint. And after about six months of having Linux Mint on two computers, I went to Manjaro Cinnamon and I used Manjaro for probably six months and I really liked it. And of course, when I used Manjaro, I used Manjaro Cinnamon because Cinnamon is my favorite desktop environment. And after a while, I put both computers on Manjaro Cinnamon 
So I had both computer, two computers running on Manjaro Cinnamon, and my computers were running fine on Linux. Both computers only had four gigs of RAM, and they were running fine on Linux Mint, MX Linux, although I didn't use that very long, and in Manjaro Linux. They were all running fine. Everything was smooth. And then after a while, I added some more RAM to my computers, my two computers. I beefed them up to eight gigs of RAM, and everything was great. And I lived in Manjaro on two computers, I don't know, maybe six months. And then I went to Arch Linux. Now, when I first went to Arch Linux, that was before Arch Linux had their automated installer on the ISO. And I wasn't able to do a manual install. So I used a third party application to install it. But eventually I learned how to do a manual install and I did about manual install probably 20 times just because I was playing around and mucking around. And of course, eventually I ended up, now I have four computers. So I was playing around a lot and I learned from watching some videos and a lot of playing around how to do a manual install of Arch Linux and did it, like I said, probably 20 times. And also when I inst first started using Arch, of course I was using the, uh, pure Arch Linux with the Cinnamon desktop because Cinnamon desktop is my favorite desktop. And then I started getting into window managers. And my first window manager I used was using Awesome Window Manager and I liked it because it was lightweight and it's one of the easier window managers to use. But everything was so small. Um, up here, you know, the workspaces are up here, the clock is up there. It was just a bit too small for me. I mean, here, even in the menu, there's hardly anything in the menu. Um, there's hardly any uh, keystrokes. So I ended up going back to the Cinnamon desktop. So I learned how to configure it and change it. So after playing around a lot and watching videos and looking up information and mucking around with the configuration file, I changed my awesome to look the way it does now. Uh, the bar is on the bottom. The clock is large and on the bottom uh the workspaces are on the bottom i have all kinds of stuff in my menu and i have all kinds of automated keystrokes and i learned about qtile so i installed qtile and this is qtile by default and there's no menu the mouse doesn't do anything well the workspaces are small so i didn't use it i learned how to work in the configuration file for uh, qtile and how to change it and make it the way i like it so i learned how to put wallpaper into it, whatever wallpaper I wanted, without having to use a third-party wallpaper application. And of course, I put the bar on the bottom because I like the bar on the bottom. Everything is larger. You can see the clock on the bottom right. The workspaces are on the bottom left, nice and large. Now, I didn't make a menu for the mouse, but I put lots of uh, my personalized keystrokes into it to open up all my applications. And I made work Qtile workable in the way I like it. When I first started using Linux, I didn't use the terminal. I was afraid of it. I stayed away from it. I didn't want to mess anything up. And I installed and deleted all my software in the software manager. But then I started using the terminal for a few things. So I would use the terminal to download applications and to delete applications, uh, just a few. Maybe there was about five applications that I would use to download. And very slowly but surely, I started using the, the terminal. And I watched uh, lots of videos on how to use a terminal in Linux. And more and more, I began using a terminal. Switching to Manjaro, used the terminal even more. And of course, once I went to pure Arch Linux, I used the terminal even more. And after installing Arch Linux the manual way, I was a pro at the terminal. And now I use the terminal all the time, and I love the terminal. And also, the AUR. With Manjaro, you have access to the AUR through the GUI or the terminal. In Arch Linux, it's all through the terminal. And I learned how to install things from the AUR. I've used EA and I've used Paru to install things from the AUR in Arch. I also learned how to install things from the AUR the manual way. So you don't have to use EA and you don't have to use Paru to install things from the AUR in Arch. You can just do it manually. Now I love the terminal and I spend more time in the terminal than I do in the GUI applications. And I'm no longer afraid of the terminal, but I still use GUI applications too. Today I have 
four computers. Three of them have eight gigs of RAM. And the fourth computer has 16 gigs of RAM. And it's the one with 16 gigs of RAM where I do all my recording and editing and make my thumbnails. Everything I do is in Linux. I don't do anything in Windows. Now, I do work, use Windows at my day job in the office, and I use Windows 10 there, but that's another story. But at home, all four computers are on Linux, and all my YouTube making and everything is in Linux. And uh, three of the computers are on pure Arch Linux. I have one computer on Linux Mint Debian, and of course, I have all kinds of virtual machines. I have a virtual machine of pure Debian. And I never lived in pure Debian, but I've used it and played with it. And everything is great. I don't regret in my apartment where I live. I have no computers with Windows on them. Everything is on Linux. And I don't regret it for one minute. So in Linux, uh, all the programs I use, I use LibreOffice for spreadsheets and Word documents. I use Rhythmbox for listening to music. I use Celluloid for my uh, videos. I use uh, PC Man FM and Nemo for file managers. I use Xterm for my terminal. I use Caden Live for my editing. Of course, I use HTOP. I also use uh, Firefox for my web browsing. I use, use OBS for uh, recording my videos. I use GIMP for my thumbnails. And I don't miss anything. I have no lack of any operating system. Now, the only thing that I don't have access to is iTunes. So I have a couple of iPods with music on them, and I take my iPod into the car and use it. And sometimes I use it at home with my headphones. So for the first two years of being on Linux, I had no Windows at home, and I didn't have virtual machines. I didn't know how to use the virtual machines, and for the first while that I was on Linux, I only had four gigabytes of RAM, so of course it my computers didn't have enough guts to run virtual machines. So I went two years without access to iTunes. Now I did, one of the problems I did have is that I was able to plug my iPods into the computer and use Rhythmbox with them. And I was able to put music into my iPods and, and delete music and so forth. But it messed up my iPod. It, it didn't do any damage to it, but it messed up the files. It messed up my playlists. So if I had a playlist with 10 songs in it, it multiplied it to, let's say, 100 songs. And, so, and in some playlists, it would multiply it to 1,000. But it wasn't taking up any more space in my iPod, but it was duplicating all the songs and not really duplicating the songs on the, using up space in my pods, but just duplicating the songs in the uh, playlist. So anyways, I went two years without using Windows at home without having access to iTunes. And iTunes was the only thing that I missed or that I lost in two years, in my first two years of using Linux. And then after two years of using Linux, in my third year, I started using virtual machines. And I used the virtual box at first, and I used it for quite a while. And then I jumped to Vert Manager. And I love Vert Manager so much. I've been using it for just over a year. So I don't even have a virtual box on my computer anymore. So with Vert Manager, I installed um, Windows 10 and Windows 11, and I don't use them. I only use them uh, maybe a, at the very most three to five times a year to go into iTunes if I want to do something with my iPods. And I go into my Windows 10 or 11 virtual machines when I want to show something on a video, which is also very rare. So I hardly ever use them. Since I've been on Linux, I bought two used computers, and the first thing I did was I plugged in a thumb drive and installed Linux on it. I didn't even boot into Windows. If you buy a brand new computer, it's possible you could void the warranty. I bought refurbished used computers, and they only came with three-month warranty. I didn't care, and I don't regret it. It's been, it's been really great. I love Linux. Can't stand Windows. That was my journey from Windows to Linux, three years and three months. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. I am the Linux Mensch.